Um, thank you so much for tuning in. The other day we held a session where Tempest and I were telling uh, folks the best way to get in touch with legislators, the best way to follow session, but I forgot to record it. So we are with you today uh, to record and uh, post this important information. Uh, a lot of it will be specific to my office, but some of it will be for any legislator um, or, you know, anyone that's following across the Commonwealth. So, of course, as usual, uh, questions are welcomed. If you have uh, any unresolved issues, concerns, or questions, we are here uh, to help with that. But uh, we definitely want to make sure that uh, folks understand that just because you have voted in November or even in a special election in January, that's not it. We need you to stay engaged, especially since with the virtual house session, you can do it from the comfort of your home, from the comfort of your phone or, you know, whatever best serves you. So we just wanted to let you know how to best do that. Um, we really do feel like it's important for residents to uh, participate in democracy. But seriously, if your legislators are not hearing from you year round, then we can't call it a representative government. Um, so I welcome your feedback, your input. Uh, and session really is the opportunity for you to speak out on bills, uh, for you to give us your support or opposition, for you to give us your value statements, um, and, and to continue to build those, those relationships. But Today specifically is about the legislative process, how policy is made and how you can have a role in that. So just a quick refresher, 2021 legislative session of the Virginia General Assembly, which we finally call session, uh, is when all 100 delegates and all 40 senators convene to present and vote on bills. And so um, in typically in the odd years, um, it is a 45 day session. Uh, so I do believe that we will still have that 45, 46 day session. Um, and then it's, uh, it's the calendar days. So it's not 45 business days, it's 45, 46 calendar days. And then as of right now, we've been scheduled to meet Monday through Friday as usual, but we'll get to the schedule. But 46 days is a very short time to get a lot of big things done, especially as COVID-19 and the racial um, uprisings and things have been going on. We know that our communities have a lot of needs, so that's why we need to make sure that everyone is still um, engaged. So the House is split up into 14 committees. And then within those committees, we're cut even into smaller groups called subcommittees, which are probably between like um, five to seven people. And those are, uh, now I'm talking about the House, the, the House members that vote on the bills. So it's really important that you understand this structure because I welcome your feedback and Tempest and I read all the emails. We welcome your feedback, but if you're telling me about a bill that you want me to support, but I'm not on the subcommittee, it has to get past the subcommittee and the committee and then to the floor. So I'll go over my committees and subcommittees, but if there are bills, let's say that are before the courts committee for criminal justice reform, I don't serve on that committee. So you'll wanna reach out to me and to the people that will be taking the first votes uh, on those bills. And so we'll go over what those committees are but it's really strategic to start with the first votes that are gonna happen on the bill as you let your own legislators know. So you kind of have to know which, which committees that we're on and not. But that subcommittee level in the house is where we will have the majority of our public comment on a lot of these bills. And we'll show you how you can do that. Um, but either way, it's really, really, really important to follow along and maybe, Tempest, what do you think? Maybe five bills that you are really, really passionate about that you track? Yes, I think that's a good number. Yeah, and then you can see which subcommittees they go to, which committees they go to. Then when they go to the House, if they pass the House, then it goes to a Senate committee, then it goes to the full Senate, and then it goes to the governor. So five is still a lot, for, especially for any of you that are new to it. Um, you're not going to be able to track all the bills and please don't try. It's, it's just a lot. Um, but first, we want to describe the changes to our office. Tempest and I have met, and we are trying to recreate the session experience, but now we're doing it digitally. So we will be in the district the entire time. 
but we still want to hear from constituents on your input. Uh, a lot of you all are still going to have virtual lobby days. And so we want to know, you know, the bills that you support, why your lived experiences that are aligned with the bill um, and why it's really important to you. So we are going to have office hours. So I'm going to share my screen uh, so that you all can um, see. Give me one second. There's so much pressure to get it right when it's recording. <laughs> um, okay, so we are going to make this uh, link live. And these are not actual meetings that are available just yet, but these are um, just kind of our um, the way that we're going to go about doing it. And so when you go to the link, that'll be how we schedule. Uh, it's with Visibook. And then you would click on the date that you're looking for uh, to see what's available. Again, these are not actual meetings, um, but this is what it would look like once you go there. So if you wanted to meet with us on the 14th, you would look and see the types of uh, times that we have available, but also the type of meeting it is. This is really important because we have some new folks coming on to our staff and some returning folks. Um, and so the constituent concerns that you may have if you uh, need help with your unemployment or if you have um, an agency request that you need for a personal something that you're going through, that's our constituent um, uh, meetings. Um, and then if you want to talk about legislation, that's a legislative meeting. If you want to tell me, you know, hey, we're with uh, folks with lived experience uh, of being incarcerated, and so we want to give you feedback on these bills, that would be a legislative meeting. And then if it's an organizational meeting where you want me to meet with your organization and give like an update on what's happening in session, what will happen in session, that's a little bit longer of an organizational meeting. Um, and some folks, I get it. Look, 15 minutes is not a lot of time, but it is. It is a long time when you're about to see what my session schedule looks like. So typically some folks would get a little offended if, um, if folks were asked to um, talk with a, a legislative aide or an intern, but really and truly it is important for, um, for me that I maximize availability. I'm on four committees and five subcommittees and they meet all throughout the week. And I'm also carrying seven bills and those, not all of those seven bills are within those same committee meetings. So it's really important to be patient, but also understand I trust my team and my team is gonna listen to you and they're gonna relay that information to me. And they, we have this whole infrastructure. So we get that, I get that information, whether you talk to me or you talk to them. So please trust that process. And so then you'll click your time, you'll click your type of meeting, and then um, you'll confirm your selection and then go over um, your email address and we'll get in touch with you with the Zoom link and information for how to come to the meeting that you just scheduled. So again, we'll make this link live once I have all of the information that I need about where I'm supposed to be because I would hate to open up meetings when there's no one available. But we're gonna use the um, Visibook for that. Uh, Tibis, did you want to add anything on scheduling meetings? No, just we may require a little more information so that we know, you know, what you want to talk about this specific bill. We would like to have that bill in front of us before, um, before the meeting. So we may request a little bit more information, but, um, you know, if we need anything else, we'll definitely get in touch with, with you before that date. Yeah, and to Tempest's point, one pagers are really good. So we, when you talk to a legislator, the the point that you're trying to ask is for them to either vote yes or vote no or make a change to a bill. Um, session isn't really the time to have philosophical conversations about an issue. That's what we can do from like March through December. Session meetings are when you want your legislator or a group of legislators to either pass or not pass a bill or make an amendment to it. So I just want to make that very clear. So if you're coming to me and there's like these five bills that you want me to support and there are these five bills that you want me to vote no on, uh, a one pager is a really good opportunity for you to put that in uh, writing so that we can have that for the record while you're talking to the legislator. One other kind of tip about, you know, meetings with legislators, um, facts and graphs and charts and information are good, but you also want to personalize it. Like, why is this issue something that you're spending your time and energy on? 
Is it because you have a loved one with a lived experience? Is it because the potential impact uh, of the bill is negative for you and your situation? Uh, you really want to be able to tell that, but tell all of that very succinctly. So if you're focusing on the story and you're focusing on the importance of the issue uh, in your 15 minutes, then it's really good to have that one pager for the other information that you need us to have, but not eat up the time um, in the meeting. So uh, the other thing is the, the, um, the phone calls. So our uh, 804 number for session and our local number, we're going to have uh, some folks that are answering those calls live, live. But if you get our voicemail message, please leave a message. We're not calling back uh, missed calls. We are only calling back folks that leave us a message or you can text us. Um, we'll have all of that information on our website, but it's not that you're being sent to voicemail. It just means that we're either on the other line or we're all in meetings. The best, best thing for you to do if you call that number is to leave a message and allow for us to give you a call back uh, on your issue. And it also allows for us to get you to the right person, again, because we'll be working on these different things. Um, emails, please include your address or at least your city, state, and zip code. Um, I represent 83,000 people in the 95th district. And while I definitely want to help anyone that needs it, I prioritize the folks that I represent because everybody has their own representative. So if you're sitting in an email, um, whether it's asking for help or whether it's telling us, you know, how you want us to vote, it's very important that you put whether or not you live in the 95th district and we do that by um, zip code or address. Um, now we do read emails from outside of the district, but like I said, we prioritize because, you know, that is who I represent. Um, and just an FYI, social media messages of any kind. I don't even really use Messenger on Facebook. If you send a message to the Facebook, uh, the delegate page, it's an automatic message that says email us. Um, when we are trying to keep track of, of constituent concerns, of scheduling requests, like if you just simply invite my Facebook account to a Facebook event, that is not an official invite. Like we, we just cannot handle that volume. It's just for right now, just being intent this, like, you know, email us to the to the official email and that's how we can kind of keep track on things we will not be checking our uh, social media messages um, as often and also uh, with the the interns that we have coming on you may not even be messaging me um, and so it's kind of like um, just just not as as um, it's not as efficient it just it, it just isn't so um, the other thing that, that we also want to do is just make sure that you know who your legislator is. And so with that, and we'll show you a couple of websites, um, I'm going to share my screen again to make sure, like, am I your legislator or not? Um, and let me get to <laughs> the right one. And so if you go to virginiageneralassembly.gov, uh, this website has a host of information about the Capitol, about session, about the Senate, about delegates, like everything that you could probably want to know um, right here. And I just want to point out a couple of things um, that are um, that are really important about about how this how this works. So um, right here, if you click, oh, sorry, up here at the top, if you click, um, you get a little bit more information. One of the huge things that you wanna do is who's my legislator. And so you can type in an address. What I'm gonna do is type in the address of the Capitol, but you type in your address here um, and then it'll come up with a handy dandy chart on who is what um, and who represents you for three different um, types. So you have your four, you have your delegate. So uh, Delegate Jeff Bourne represents the 71st district and that's where the capital is. If you're in the 95th district, my name would be here. Uh, your state senator, your United States congressional representative, those three are based on your address. And then everyone in Virginia has the same two United States senators, uh, Tim Kaine and Mark Warner. There are phone numbers that are listed here as well for how to get in touch with them. Each office is handling their phone numbers differently. 
for uh, Bourne, his office is the local office, so there's no changes. But for me, like I said, that 804 number is going to be forwarded uh, since we are working remotely. But that's a really good way to find out who your delegate and senator are. Another thing that you can find on uh, the Virginia General Assembly website um, is how to track bills. Um, and then also um, signing up for different services that they have. So if you click on members in session, it has all of these things. You can, that's how you can get to um, watching the house floor video. That's how you can get to um, providing written comments, which we'll talk about in just one second. That's how you can get to a meeting schedule to see who's meeting and when, all kinds of things. But also you can get to the member listing. So this is the list of all 100 delegates because we have had those two special elections. So we are now fully up and running with 100 delegates. And this is their information. So you can look it up, um, you know, alphabetically. You can look it up by district. Like if you know your district, but you don't know the delegate, you can look that up. The other thing is you can go to lists and you can build your own report on what it is that you want. So if you want um, district phone numbers because you want to do, you know, phone calls about, you know, a certain bill, you can click on telephone list and it will clearly um, set that up for you. A lot of folks, you're going to want to call the district phone number because that's, you know, where we are. Um, if you want to do labels um, by, you know, mailing to our district offices, you can look that up as well. So this list function is, um, is really helpful. Um, and then just going back to, um, to the main one, when you click on house floor video, this is how you can keep track of what is being shown at any given time. And so if you don't, um, if you've never used this, then you can definitely do um, now playing. That shows you what is happening. But if you have a date, even if it's in the past, that you want to look up meetings that may have happened that day, you can use the calendar function to find them and look at older meetings to hear conversations uh, for what may have happened. And that is really big for like the crime commission or the deeds commission, those commissions that meet uh, in the interim. And you can hear the discussion on how we got to some of the bills that we're hearing. Uh, and then when session is in, you'll see floor session. That's how you can click on that and then see um, the video. Uh, so for virtual, you'll see the speaker, you'll see the clerk, and then you'll see a delegate that's speaking. Um, but if, if uh, no delegate is, is speaking, then they, they won't be on camera. Um, you can also see the person that's offering uh, the prayer or meditation for that day. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a little bit different instead of seeing kind of like, you know, the other members or seeing the full chamber. Uh, it, it's a little bit different virtual, but it's really important that we're staying safe, uh, both from violence and pandemic, frankly. So then, um, you know, thinking about the bills that you want to track, that website is, um, is different. That is, L well, let me show you how you can get to it from the front screen. From, Gen from virginiageneralassembly.gov, you can click on search legislation with LIS. So I'm going to click on that. And then this is LIS. This is a super important website because this is where you'll go to track legislation, find meetings, a lot of the things that, you know, we just saw on the other, but also lobbyists in a box. So let's go to, um, we're at lis.virginia.gov. Let's go to bills and resolutions. So the way that you can look up bills is various ways but a lot will be here in this introduced section. Right now, if you wanna know bills that have been introduced, you can click on all legislation and these are the bills that we enter entered. Now, this is the second year of a term. So the bills don't start at one. The next year bills will start at one in 2022 with that new general assembly after the elections, but this numbering continues. So you don't have to look for House Bill 1 this year. Um, but yeah, you can just scroll down and you can see, oh, okay, these are all of the bills that have been um, 
put up. So let's say today you want to go through and look at the bills, but more bills ended up being introduced. Then you can remember today I looked up and House Bill 1969 was the furthest that we got. So then if you see a House Bill 1970, you know that's new since the last time you looked up. Um, but then you just click on the bill number and it talks about, you know, um, the bill that you're working on. So I'm gonna click on one of mine, House Bill 1921. We're working on enhancing and unifying the way that curbside voting happens, um, specifically for those that need it. Uh, A, in some localities, you have to get out of the car or someone with you has to get out of the car to go inside to let them know that you need curbside voting. And that just kind of goes against the whole point of having curbs curbside voting available. So let's say it's COVID. I don't want somebody to take me, but I have an injury or a disability or I uh, am of an of the uh, age or whatever that leads me to, to want to vote by curbside. This is saying that the voter shall know and it shall be clearly marked outside of the precinct how to say to the people inside that I want to um, do curbside voting. So um, I have seen across the country that there are some really fancy ways where it's like pushing a button or um, there's a phone number that you can call or honk twice. <laughs> so there are just different ways that there, and there are also people under good weather that are just posted outside and ready to help you. Um, so we don't prescribe how it has to happen. It just has to have clearly marked instructions on how to notify that person. And it also clarifies that a temporary physical disability, a broken leg or whatever counts for this. So when you're looking at the bill, you'll see the bill number, the bill title, you'll see the patron, uh, that's the chief sponsor of it. You can then click on all patrons and see people that are supportive of this. Give it a time for all of the patrons to show up because we're still going through everything. So probably um, starting the end of next week, I mean, the end of this week, you'll start seeing a ton of patrons line up behind certain bills. And then under that is listing out what has happened. So you can see the full text of the bill by clicking on PDF and it brings up the full text of the bill. So what we want to remind you is if there is regular text, that it just like nothing is special about it. Like this whole section here, if it is just regular text, that is the current code of Virginia. The bill is not touching anything that is in regular text. So if you are upset with subsection one on line 97, this bill does nothing about that, right? Um, but when you look at it, if something is scratched out, then that's something that is being taken out of code. And if there's italicized font, that's something that we're proposing to put in. So basically, we are taking out a section of how we used to do curbside voting. And we're adding in a new section that says, um, this is how we're going to do it. And so you'll scroll down and you'll see all of this italicized language is what we are now saying is what it should be. And so you can look at any bill. Scratch out means we're saying we should take this out of code. Italicized means we should put it in code. Okay. And so that's what you can do. And you can do that for all of these bills. Um, you know, just keeping and, and looking through. The other way that you can look up bills where you're like, hey, I went to who's my delegate and I looked up, I saw that Sia Price is my member. So let me look up and see what are all the bills that she's working on. And so you'll just scroll down, you'll go to um, what's considered to be my page and you'll see my committee assignments. And then you'll also see chief patron, co-patron. Chief patron means these are my bills. Like these are the ones that I'm putting blood, sweat, and tears into. And I have released six of the seven that I will be carrying. And then you can click on those to see everything that I just showed you from the other, um, the other page. Co-patron means I'm working with other people to help get their bills passed or really supportive of, of, of these other bills. And those uh, co-patron bills are what I was saying, give us a couple of days to try and get all of those. But let's say for instance, I'm working with one delegate on TANF funding. I'm working with another delegate on um, some housing issues or emergency management, like working with these other delegates, but I'm not carrying the bill, but I'm working with them because I really want to see this bill get passed. That's where that is. And then again, you have our email and then our mailing address. 
If you want us to get it quickly, please send it to our Newport News PO box. Um, because if you send it to Richmond, it will have to get forwarded to us, which takes up a little bit of time. So I'm gonna pause there. Tempest, you got anything to add? No, I think that was good. Okay. The only thing that I would add is just to uh, stress the importance of leaving a voicemail. Like that, that really does help us out because sometimes, and I expect it to pick up during session, we literally receive hundreds of calls. Um, so as Delegate Price mentioned, we don't have time in the day to call each number back to see what you want. Um, so, you know, whether you're calling like my work cell phone or the 2665935 number, which is our office number, again, please leave a voicemail so that we know um, why you're calling um, the best contact number to reach you, to call you back, um, and then give us a little time, you know, because yeah. Your price mentioned we'll kind of be in and out of meetings and and doing things to help her um, prep for her meetings so please give us a, a little bit of time to get back to you and then um, let's say you're at work and you need to get in touch with us but you can't make that phone call you can text that 757-266-5935 number that is a text that goes to us um, and so that helps us, we get it by email. So that helps us and within our app, that helps us track that as well. Uh, and we'll text back and forth with you, um, but not everybody is able to talk during our office hours, completely understand it, but that text helps. Um, and then um, after hours, we kind of get to the emails. So yeah, so my committee assignments, I am on general laws, which um, handles uh, Freedom of Information Act, FOIA information, uh, alcoholic, uh, alcohol beverage control. Um, it handles, um, it handles uh, housing and consumer protection, uh, gaming, and um, also kind of like a random category of bills that didn't neatly fit anywhere else. And on this, I serve in the, the housing and consumer protection subcommittee. So this is another way that you can find out when and where they meet. So general laws meets Tuesday and Thursday at 1 p.m. Uh, and so then you would say, oh, okay, well, let me see what's going on here. You would click on, oh, first of all, that's the committee membership here. And then you would click on agendas. Um, and then this would have, once they're live, this would have your agendas for the subcommittees. It would also have the active agendas for the full committee meetings. And when you click on the agenda, that tells you which of those bills were being discussed that day. Um, so then I am also on, um, like I said, this housing uh, and consumer protection subcommittee. That is Thursday at 7 a.m. I know, but we only have 46 days to get all of this done. So, um, you know, a couple of these meetings will be a little early. We'll go over the full schedule in just one second, but I just wanted you to see how you can go through. I'm also on health, welfare, and institutions. This deals with um, uh, most medical things outside of insurance. Some of those go to labor and commerce, um, but we have um, TANF funding, Medicaid, behavioral health, um, scope of practice for doctors, hospitals, uh, even sewage treatment, um, child care, um, uh, the Department of Juvenile Justice, so some of those things come to us as opposed to going to the Crime Commission. So it's a, a, a real good um, mix of things. That'll be Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. And then, of course, we have these subcommittees. I'm on the behavioral health subcommittee. Uh, I used to chair it, but uh, now we're under the awesome leadership of Rodney Willett, Delegate Rodney Willett, who is actually working within the behavioral health um, realm. So that'll be Tuesday at seven. Uh, so a lot of this, like I said, like if you don't plan on coming to a seven o'clock meeting, I feel you. So let me know how you feel about the bills before seven o'clock. So maybe the night before. Um, um, so, you know, we get it. Um, now, on privileges and elections, uh, right here, I am the newly appointed uh, vice chair for privileges and elections, uh, working with our chairman, Marcus Simon. And um, privileges and elections, think uh, elections, think uh, gubernatorial appointments, think uh, constitutional amendments, and then also campaign. And so if you come down and see um, Right now, that does say Wednesday at 1 a.m., but that is Wednesday at 1 p.m. We'll jot that down to, uh, to get that fixed. Um, but Wednesday at 1 p.m. is when, you know, the full um, house meets. 
it is very possible that there will even be meetings uh, as soon as January 13th on the first day of session. So be ready. Now, when you look down here, there's a new voting rights subcommittee, and I am very happy to be uh, chairing this. And we will talk about voting rights, which is a little bit different than elections, um, but specific to the access to the ballot and equitable access to the ballot, where the election subcommittee that I also serve on uh, will be talking about how elections are run. So when we got uh, no absentee, um, no excuse absentee voting, that's elections. When we're talking about protecting voting rights, that's voting rights. And so that's a little bit different. And so that's Friday at 11 and we'll get that updated with that committee membership um, as well. Then I also serve on um, public safety and I was on the firearms committee, but um, I will be serving on the public safety committee um, and this will be um, updated as well. Um, there are a couple of shifts that had to happen so that one person isn't supposed to be in several places at one time because we need to listen and vote based on what we're hearing. And so we'll um, look to see that. So those are the five subcommittees, but four committees that I'm in. So that is any given week, I have nine meetings before I even talk to a constituent. So that's what we're saying about being patient with us. So we appreciate it. The other way that you can look up a bill is if you know the bill number, just literally typing it in um, and then going to the page. So this is the voting rights bill that I'm working on. You'll hear more about that later. Uh, we're really proud to work with advocates and civil rights attorneys uh, to get to a good place with a good bill that is much like uh, the Voting Rights Act of 1965 with several of the comprehensive pieces. Uh, if you've been watching this week, you understand um, you know, from the November election to the January election, uh, voter suppression needs to be a thing of the past. But as divisiveness is growing and tensions are growing, we need to make sure that at least in Virginia, it is safe, easy, uh, and, and accessible for all who um, uh, vote to be able to get to, to hear their voice. And so you can click on the PDF and see um, all of that, that coming, but more information on that. So then as session progresses, You'll want to see, okay, well, what passed the House? What passed the Senate? Um, what was signed by the Speaker and the President, meaning it passed both the House and the Senate? And then we'll do another tutorial, but eventually we want to talk about the governor's um, actions to the bills. Um, so this, this site is really, really, really big. Now, lobbyists in a box. Um, actually, Tempest, We'll do, um, we'll do an email description about how to do, uh, you know, lobbies in the box when we send this video out, but it's basically a free bill tracking service. So if you were like, you know what, I care about voting rights, you could sign up to get email notifications for any time there's action on House Bill 1890 or any of the bills that you're tracking. So those five bills that you're tracking, you can sign up for lobbyists in a box to get email notifications uh, when, when there's been a vote and, and everything. So I'm gonna go to a previous session just so you can kind of see what this, um, this bill does. Um, and I'm gonna pull up, nope, that's not what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm gonna pull up my page from last year. That's how you get to it. You go to a different session, click, and you can see, um, the bills that, that I put forward. So one of them was um, for us to get rid of the dreaded bowl if there's a tie and a recount. Um, and this actually became law. So we would have a special election if there's ever again a tie and a recount so that nobody's being pulled out of a bowl. Um, but I wanted you to see this so you can see what it looks like after the bill has gone through the process. So in the subcommittee, you can click on it and you can see the yeas and the nays. You can uh, look at the full committee. You can see the yeas and the nays, and then you can um, follow the bill to the full house, yeas and nays, and then you'll see it goes to the, um, to the Senate. So this is what it looks like once a bill has gone through the entire process. And then um, if it passes the House and the Senate, it gets signed by the Speaker and by um, the President, and then it's communicated, communicated to the governor. The governor has a deadline to act. The governor signed this one, and then it went into the um, Acts of Assembly, which is uh, basically it became part of the Virginia Code. Um, so that is uh, an update on that. Um, and so this is, 
you know, us trying to make sure that you understand uh, things. And I know that this is a lot, but luckily there are other people who are talking about these things as well. Um, the last piece, we're going to give you some information to join some of their sessions. The last piece that I do want to share is public comment. Now, again, I am sharing this for the house, okay? So what you'll want to do is go to hodspeak dot house dot virginia dot gov and you'll get this handy dandy website shout out to the clerk's office um Suzette Denzo like and her team have done an amazing job now if you were paying attention during special session this looks somewhat familiar but it has been even enhanced for us to to cover it um so this is if you click on about it tells you what um speak is how to speak is um, how, you know, the policies, procedures, and everything. And then um, you'll click on bills and committee. By going to the committee, you'll look at all the bills. That's one way you can do it, or you can do it by meeting. Now, if you go to the house meeting schedule, say you've looked up your bills, you found your five that you want to, you know, um, follow, and then you're like, all right, cool, I want to do public comment on one of these five bills or all of these five bills to say I support or not. And so then you'll go to this and you'll find the meeting that matches with where that bill is going to be sent. So let me, let me just show you because that was a mouthful. So remember when we looked up, you know, the, um, the bill. So we do House Bill 1890, which is the voting rights bill. There will be something here that says was sent to uh, and more than likely privileges and elections, right? Because it's about elections. And then it may say was sent to a subcommittee or it might stay in full, either way. It'll let you know where the bill is gonna be heard and then you can find the corresponding meeting. Now, when this goes live, it will have something right under the time that says um, public comment and then you'll click on it. And at that time, you will have the opportunity to, um, to um, enter in your, your public comment. So again, that is hodspeak.house.virginia.gov, meetings, and then you can click there. You can also see past meetings. You can also see committee video, all of that. And you can enter public comment in a written form, which um, you have... Uh, I think it's uh, 425 words uh, to enter in, and that goes to the public. So public comment is public. So you don't want to give your personal information. If it's a public testimony that you really only want your legislator to know about, but not associate with your name, don't put it in public comment. This is something that you have no problem for the world to see that you support this and why without that personal information that you may not want to share. So imagine if you were um, uh, standing in front of the committee that's being recorded, what you would say in public like that. You can also sign up to say it aloud in a live meeting. Uh, and so for that, we want to go to this little one pager that they give on how to submit it. Uh, and we're going to include a link to this in the email. Um, but this is really about the best way for public participation. Um, this says that you might have three minutes. I can definitely tell you as a subcommittee chair, if I have 100 people signed up to speak on something, not everybody is going to get three minutes to speak because I only have two hours for the whole meeting. Um, and so we just know, um, we just know like it, just be patient. But it's possible that they're like, hey, you have 30 seconds. Tell me if you, so you gotta, you gotta take that speech that you prepared and say, I support House Bill 1890 because it's awesome. All right, you know, and that's, that's your time. Um, also, if there are too many people, the subcommittee or committee chair might actually put a poll in the Zoom room for those that were not able to speak to see, okay, how many of you support, how many of you uh, oppose. And so we could do that. Now, all written comments that are received four hours in advance will be given to the committee me members prior to the meeting. 
Um, and so you really want to make sure that you're doing your prep work ahead of time, because if you have a 7 a.m. meeting, listen, just put it in the night before, <laughs> right? Uh, you don't have to worry about that. But when you also go to the House of Delegates um, uh, speak page to sign up for public comment, when you if you are still able to sign up to do it, there'll be a box that says you want to join the meeting. You wanna make sure that your phone number and email address are that that you check on a regular basis because the Zoom link will come to you. And if there are any technical issues or any problems, they're gonna use that phone number and email address for you. So we'll um, go through this again once the, the um, bills and things start becoming live. So you'll start seeing it. And uh, you know, I'll ask that you guys speak up on the bills that we're working on, uh, but this is the way that we're doing public comment for the house. So you can email, you can call, you can offer written public comment on a hot speak, and you can sign up to speak live at a meeting um, for, for the bill. Tempest, you got anything to add about how they can make their voices heard on the bills? No, I think that those four ways um, covered it. I would just, again, ask people to make sure that you send us the information in advance. So maybe like an hour before the meeting is a little bit too late because I'm sure we're running around trying to find Zoom links, like there's a lot going on. <laughs> um, so, you know, make sure that you get that information to us as soon as possible. And if you send it the night before a 7 a.m. meeting, we will check it before that meeting the next morning. Yeah. And so um, just a few more notes. This is running a little longer than, but it's so much information. Um, but just to let you know a couple of changes that are occurring due to the pandemic for our office. We love doing honor roll letters. But at this time, we are not able to do honor roll letters because what would typically happen is we would get a list of all of the amazing students that got honor roll and we would just write the letters and send them back to the school and then the school would pass them out. As of right now, there is no plan for uh, that to have happened uh, and be back to my knowledge, there's no plan for uh, all of Newport, New, Newport News Public Schools or Hampton Schools to be in, um, in person in January. And so most of the session is in January. Um, so we will have a link where if you wanna request a letter uh, and give us a good mailing address, we will gladly send uh, letters to your student, but the honor roll letters and certificates for, district, um, for the district, we are not able to do at this time. We don't want the, the district to give us students addresses and they wouldn't I'm just saying like it's just not possible at this moment um, should there be an opportunity to do something later in the year once we're back face to face we will definitely um, look back at it but you know, until further notice, we're not able to do that. Uh, and also no public appearances. I will not be uh, putting myself at risk during session. It's a short session. I need to be healthy and happy and whole <laughs> uh, while we're doing the work. Um, we have learned tragedy upon tragedy in our area, but also as legislators, um, we lost Senator Ben Chafin uh, to complications with COVID. Several delegates have had COVID. Um, it, it's just not something that I'm going to risk. And I will also say I'm watching y'all on Instagram and Facebook and Newport News and Virginia can be locked back down. Um, we're not seeing the mask usage um, that we're used to um, from the spring when everybody was just like set on helping each other. Uh, but we are seeing the rising numbers, not only in cases, hospitalizations, but also deaths in the area. So please, for the benefit of others, you might be healthy. You might not be high risk. Uh, please, please wear your mask and, um, and do what we have to do to take care of each other. And then also stay tuned for more information about the vaccine rollout as that's happening within our communities. Um, and then if you're working on, um, if you're working on constituent services, uh, and I say this with all due respect, but if you're asking us, how do you meet with someone about a business idea that you have, that is very important, but it is not as high a priority for us as someone who uh, needs to navigate unemployment or rental assistance or utilities assistance. So that is why we are asking uh, during a pandemic that you still send whatever it is you need to send, but be very patient with us and our small team and how we are uh, responding to everything. Um, let me see if there's anything else. I'm trying to see, Tempest, is there anything else that you can think of? I don't think so. Well, one of, one of the questions that we got during the uh, Zoom meeting on session prep was, um, how can, like, 
citizens and constituents be engaged like year round. And so one of the things is like, there are constituents that I have come to know by face and name because of how often we talk and because of like, they're always going to tell me what they feel about, you know, things they might be with an organization that uh, I've met with, or um, they've told me like, well, how they feel about different bills or we're working together on legislation. Uh, so get to know us so that when the name or the face comes across, it's like, oh yeah, we talked about da 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 da. So the more you contact us and, and are working with us, um, the more we can build that relationship uh, follow us on social media, attend our Zoom events. Tomorrow, we're going to be having one on voting rights, which I'll give you a little bit more information in just one sec. Um, make it a habit to reach out on issues facing the community. There might be a bill that like, I have no lived experience about what, what that would do. No constituent has ever contacted me about it. Um, so I need to hear from you. I need to hear what the 95th district is thinking and feeling about these, you know, these bills uh, so that we can work together on it. And then um, speak up at the hearings, offer your support and opposition to bills. We'll tell you about, you know, you can sign up for our newsletter at delegatemarciaprice.com. And then we'll be sending out updates about, you know, how my bills are progressing through the system. Um, you can apply to serve on a local or state board or commission because those reports come to us legislators about, you know, bills and things. Um, and then after session, meet with us about your ideas for the next session or for things that we can be working on together, collaborations that we can make. And then of course, if there's anything that you ever need, call us and we'll be, you know, happy to help with that. Um, so then just letting you know some of the other things that we do, uh, commending resolutions or memorial resolutions, we can put in on behalf of our communities. So if your church uh, faith group or uh, faith leader is having an anniversary that ends in uh, zero or five, like a 10 year, 15 year, 20 year, five year, uh, we do resolutions to celebrate that. If you know of an organization that's done spectacular work, um, we can do a resolution on that. Um, and then if we've lost a community champion and you want a memorial Realize their legacy, uh, we can do memorial resolutions. Um, so please let us know if you have that. Uh, in general, be patient. No one has ever gone through a Virginia House regular session virtually. No one. <laughs> so we are all in this together. If you see something glitching, let us know. But like, know that I don't run it. So like, don't yell at us. But you know, you let us know. But just breathe breathe, breathe, breathe. If there's a glitch, we will stop. Um, I get text messages, you know, really briefly. So if I know that my subcommittee video has stopped, we will go at ease. Um, so, so just understand, like, breathe. It will all work out. We're all in this together. Um, but yeah, so then lastly, I just want to close with, again, uh, the, the events that we have. So tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, January 12th at 6 p.m., we have some amazing voting rights advocates and experts coming to talk about voting rights, not only in the national sense, but in Virginia, but specific to the bill that I'm working on. Uh, so we have uh, New Virginia Majority, uh, Advancement Project National Office, and the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights joining us. Have your questions answered. Uh, the, the link is bit.ly, um, uppercase VA, V for voting, and then lowercase voting um, rights. This is really, I'll put it in <laughs> put it in the email, but it's VA Voting Rights 2021. If, if you're following me on social media, you already have the link. You're already registered. Uh, and we also have some really cool things to help you be hands-free in your car. Uh, if you're a driver with your uh, cell phone, that you'll, if you register and attend the uh, webinar, you'll be entered to win some of those. But then Progress Virginia is also having a meeting tomorrow at um, 6.30, and they're having a session about prep for this. And so we'll drop that link as well. A lot of this information, updates from us, all kinds of things will be on delegatemarciaprice.com, on uh, our Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, SoundCloud, YouTube, we're trying to get it all out there for you. Uh, so that is all we have for today. Again, that ran a little bit longer than we were anticipating, but we wanted to make sure that we covered everything that we covered the other day. Uh, Tempest, send us out. What wise words do you have for us before session? <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm actually excited um, that we are still able to continue our work, but do it in a safe way. I'm excited that we're being, bringing on great staff to help us during sessions, so you will be introduced to them soon. Um, and I'm excited that 
the public has more options to participate, right? So if you're working from home or helping your kids, you know, with school, um, you can still voice your opinion about the bills, um, you know, through the public comment and also participating by signing up to speak. So I'm actually very excited about that. Hopefully more people will participate. Um, yeah. And we look forward to, to talking to you all during session. Yeah, and the and the schedule of like when the things are happening came out. It's on my social media, but we'll also include it in the follow up email, um, so that you know it's like a seven a.m. to nine a.m. block. Then it's uh, for subcommittee. Then it's like nine a.m. to eleven a.m. Then it's eleven a.m. to one p.m. And then um, is there a one to three? Or are we on break? There, there's a one to three block. One to three. That's I think that's full. One okay. to three. Then three o'clock. Uh, for the House is caucus meetings, so there are no committee meetings. Then floor will start at four o'clock, and then after that, there's a uh, potential for other committee meetings. Now, January 13th, we will, by law, start at 12 noon, but then following that, that's when floor session goes to 4 p.m., but we'll have, um, we'll have all of that in the email. So thank you so much for watching. This may have created some questions for you. If you have those questions, utilize the networks uh, that we've listed, um, you know, email and all of that. But we'll even take uh, comment posts uh, as questions and we'll look through those and try and answer those um, because we're going to be posting this there. Um, but yeah, just follow us, sign up for the newsletter. Thank you so much for your support and encouragement and prayers uh, as we're going through this. But I look forward to working together so that we can get even more of the changes that our community needs. So you voted in November. Now this is the rest of the job of, <laughs> of the residents. And, and we look forward to walking with you through this. Thank you. And we'll talk to you soon.